Story recapped here. Today, I'm going to explain a drama and sci-fi film called The Beyond. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. In London, Jillian, a senior member of Space Agency, the biggest astronomical institute in the world, is having an interview about her life and work. Her daughter joins the interview, and she tells the interviewer how proud she is of her mother. Jillian suddenly gets a phone call from the agency, and the interview is cut short as she needs to rush to work. Footage from the International Space Station is then shown. The recording is from one of the astronauts, Jim Marcel. He heads out of the station for a spacewalk and repairs equipment outside of the station. They suddenly start hearing interference in the radio transmission, and Jim reports seeing strange lights. Other astronauts see it but indicate that there are no expected astronomical anomalies that could explain what they're seeing. The lights intensify, and the station starts vibrating. Jim tries to hurry back inside, but Jim's transmission suddenly cuts off. Back on Earth, Jillian explains the recorded footage and says that satellites worldwide experience the same thing at the same time. Unfortunately, Jim was never found and is presumed dead. Charles, the chief of mission control, mourns his dear friend's passing. A team is now analyzing the footage from the space station frame by frame to figure out what happened to Jim. They still have no clue what the strange anomaly is. Alex, the head of exploration missions, talks about the anomaly, saying that it has appeared several decades ago but disappeared before they could get more information. Jessica, a cosmologist, is brought in due to her expertise in gravitational waves. They found that anomaly emits a form of gravitational wave, something that shouldn't be possible. The scientists have given the anomaly the nickname the Void. Alex explains that the Void is similar in appearance to the remnants of the supernova, but due to its proximity to Earth, they know it's not an exploded star. They've also detected a short burst radio wave transmitted at a specific 1420 MHz frequency. An astrophysicist from the University of Astrophysics, Jacob, tells a story about the radio astronomers who discovered the signal. It was detected years ago and was dubbed the WOW signal. Astronomers have been trying to locate the source of the signal ever since. Curious to learn more about the void, the scientists send reconnaissance probes into it. In the control room, the scientists watch as a probe slowly makes its way into the void. As the probe enters the void, it loses its signal. Fortunately, they've prepared for this, and Charles reveals that the probe was transmitting real-time footage into high-speed servers on Earth. They manage to capture a short glimpse of what's on the other side. At a meeting, Jillian presents the images from the probe. They observe matter entering and exiting the void, which leads them to conclude that the void could be a wormhole. What they need to know now is what's on the other side of the void. By sending more probes into the void, they get better images and discover another planet on the other side of the void. Jessica theorizes that the void could be a sort of first contact with intelligent life from the other side, and Alex expresses his concern saying humanity neither has the capacity nor the resources to investigate further. The scientists then debate about their next move. Jillian wants to send astronauts into the void, but Charles strongly objects, saying they can't risk more people. Jillian acknowledges this but says they can't keep sending more probes as the probes can't give them enough information, and they lose all communication with probes sent in. She stresses the need to be in contact with something that crosses into the void. Alex agrees, saying the void could be the most significant discovery in humanity's history. They eventually agree on initiating a full mission into the void. Jillian says the mere existence of a potentially habitable planet on the other side is too important to dismiss. Professor Jacob is highly pessimistic about the mission and thinks it will fail. He argues that the human body cannot endure the stresses of traveling through a wormhole. He recommends using more probes or robotics instead. After a while, the void suddenly starts emitting a strange dark smoke that clumps together into thousands of spheres in the skies around the world. Panic surges through the masses, and even the space agency has no clue what to make of it. Over the past few weeks, Jillian and her team have found that the void had been emitting invisible waves around the same time the dark orbs formed. These waves have grown exponentially, and simulations suggest that the void would soon manifest a massive cosmic storm. They believe that when the storm reaches Earth, it will bathe the planet in a massive cosmic wave. Near a forest, armed personnel set up a base underneath the dark orb. While all this is happening, the space agency cooperates with the US military to create a humanoid powered by an astronaut's preserved brains. Alice, a synthetic engineer, explains the Human 2.0 project. A prosthetic with the same organic makeup as a human will act as a vessel for the astronaut's consciousness. In the lab, Alice opens up a robotic human's head compartment that will house the brain. She explains the material inside the suit has millions of tiny neural fibers that will allow the brain to move the body. She compares the empty humanoid to a computer without a hard drive. For the following days, Jillian and her team interview candidates for the mission. They're informed that the transfer to Human 2.0 is permanent. Jessica is asked if she'd be willing to participate, but she declines, thinking her capabilities are inefficient and saying she doesn't have the guts to do so. Space Agency then gathers candidates and has them undergo physical, mental, and emotional exams to determine if they're fit for the mission. Only the best of the best will be chosen to act as ambassadors for the human race. Dr. Koresh Patel explains the science behind the transfer. The suit will allow humans to live much longer. However, there are still limitations as the mind can deteriorate over time. The brain will be connected to an artificial spinal cord that will allow mind and body connection. One of the two candidates is Carl Roberts, 
who shows exemplary cognitive abilities. Carl is disabled, unable to walk, but he's excited as he'll soon have a perfectly working body again. Alex likes Carl, he commends his passion and evident desire to take the next step for humanity. In the transplant facility, Carl's face is scanned. This will be used to make an exact copy of his face that will be put on the human. 2.0. The suit itself is made from military-grade graphene woven together to create an impenetrable and flexible shell. The eyes use nano-based optics that'll allow perfect sight for any lighting conditions. A breathing mechanism is integrated for heat regulation, also acting as a familiar feature for the host. Lastly, a tailored compound is injected into the suit, which will provide the brain resources it needs to function and maintain itself. The spacecraft that will carry Carl has been modified to be as light and fast as possible. All the technology needed to keep a human alive is removed from the ship as Human 2.0 is self-sustaining. Sockets will then be connected to the humanoids, monitoring their conditions and feeding information to the brain. Alex focuses on alien interaction. He has manufactured a hard drive containing all there is to know about Earth in hopes that when they contact the alien lifeforms, they can communicate and befriend them. Back in the transplant facility, Dr. Koresh and his team prepare Carl for the procedure. The entire process will take about three days, and he'll have to be injected with a cocktail of anesthetics throughout. In his final interview, Carl reminisces about his past. He becomes emotional when he talks about the most important person in his life, his father. He dedicates his sacrifice for him, and he drifts off to sleep. The search to find meaning behind the Dark Sphere's existence continues. The space agency prohibits any violence toward the orbs, not until they find out how it's connected to the void. There are hundreds of spheres worldwide, with more appearing each day. The findings show that the spheres are oddly in a formation as if they're preparing for something. Three days after the start of the transplant, Dr. Koresh breaks the unfortunate news of Carl's death. Carl's brain couldn't fuse with the artificial spinal cord. His biological makeup was not compatible with the organic material in the suit. Everyone is in dismay with the outcome, but the search for another candidate continues. To prevent another loss, Alice configures Human 2.0. She plans to introduce organic cells from the candidate and inject it into the material inside the suit beforehand, increasing the chance of a connection to form. Meanwhile, Alex suggests sending robot soldiers to the void as their time is running out. However, Jillian doesn't want alien lifeforms to view humans as a threat. Scientists figure out that the employees in the agency have undergone thorough health-related tests for their safety from the dangerous materials present in the facility. With this, they find three candidates with a precise biological makeup that's compatible with Human 2.0. One of the three is Jessica. The next day, Jessica visits Jillian to talk about her doubts. She agrees that her knowledge will be helpful in the mission's success, but the permanent transfer to a robot body frightens her. Jillian assures that her family will be taken care of if she doesn't make it. After careful consideration, Jessica finds the courage to accept the responsibility. Alex tries to change her mind, saying there are still two other possible candidates. However, Jessica is sure that she's the most qualified out of them. During his interview, Alex voiced his concern about Jessica's inability to lead such a critical mission. Jillian counters his opinion, saying that Jessica's thirst for knowledge and ability to look further than what the eye can see makes her more than competent to lead. Days after the transfer procedure, Jessica awakens as a new woman. Her brain accepts the vessel, marking their first success. Jillian and her colleagues observe Jessica. Her face exudes happiness as her friend is now reborn. Jessica survived but is far from stable. She still hasn't grown accustomed to her new environment, finding difficulty talking and performing basic motor skills. Alice reassures her that the team is working on fixing her speech and that she'll be fully operational soon enough. Jessica can finally speak, she feels the same and, at the same time, different. Her entire consciousness and identity transferred successfully, and the final obstacle is her physical rehabilitation. The day of the launch arrives, and a robot soldier accompanies Jessica on the spacecraft. The rocket lifts off, leaving Earth's atmosphere. The link between Mission Control and Jessica has been established, and they get access to what she sees. The spacecraft enters the void. Jessica describes her surroundings on the transmission. Jessica describes the void as beautiful, but as they get near, the pressure gets stronger. Her readings suddenly go off the charts, and the void starts distorting everything. Jessica's ship enters the void, and Mission Control loses signal, Jessica is on her own, and the only thing everyone can do now is to pray. Jillian hopes that they'll return within a year. However, she also prepares for the possibility of them not returning at all. A week after the launch, Jessica's craft reappears, and radars detect it falling into the Atlantic Ocean. No one predicted them to return in such a short period. In the ship, they found Jessica alone, with no signs of the robot soldier's whereabouts. Mixed opinions circulate within the space agency. Jillian believes the mission is a success while Alex deems it to be a failure. He further states that this could be a warning from the aliens. Meanwhile, Jessica is in an unconscious state while being quarantined. They have no idea when or if she'll wake up. With the technology embedded in the suit, they find out that several years worth of memories are recorded in Jessica's brain despite her being gone for only five days. The team processes the data, translating Jessica's memory into video. However, they have difficulty producing a clear feed. The situation regarding the dark orbs escalates, and the military grows restless. They start firing at the sphere, but the spheres are unaffected, seemingly absorbing everything the military is throwing at it. 
Jessica wakes up suddenly, but only for a moment as the process of collecting memories delays her recovery. Jillian desperately wants answers, so she asks the unstable but awake Jessica about the events in the void. She tells them that the robot soldier disappeared from the craft in an instant. He eerily floated away as if something had abducted him. Then a flash of light exploded from his arm. The ship then crashed into a planet. She traveled the surface, touching the rocks, the dirt, and the flowers. She encountered dark smoke just like the one in Earth's skies. She then got transported into a white room, and the shadow took a different form and approached her. Jessica saw Jim Marcel, and Jim kept saying to her that everything was going to be okay. Cryptic messages were transferred to her mind, and that's all Jessica remembers. Jillian and the space agency cannot believe the information presented to them. If what Jessica says is true, then the alien life forms may be peaceful. Alex remains pessimistic and doubts the credibility of Jessica's statements, saying that with the aliens' advanced technology, they could have easily altered her memories. Later, time-lapse footage shows several celestial bodies disintegrating. White smoke appears to envelop them before the celestial bodies crumble. The International Space Station informs the space agency of incoming fragments crashing into Earth. The dark orbs start moving, enveloping the planet in a dark mist. It functions as a protective dome that intercepts the falling debris. At the agency, they celebrate as they watch the smoke protect the planet. Jillian and Alex realize how wrong they were. The fear of the unknown blinded them as the entity they thought was a threat turned out to be their savior. Jessica finally recovers to a stable state, allowing for her memories to be displayed clearly. The shadows told her that they saved them because they saw the hard drive about humanity that Jessica brought with her. The shadows deemed humans worthy of being saved despite their impurities. They then left and said that they'd return at another time. Jessica says that everything that's been happening is all part of a cycle created by the aliens to purify the universe and keep it stable. On another day, Jim Marcel is detected in the Arizona desert. Military helicopters rescue and bring him to the space agency. They tried to ask him about his experience on the other side, but he has no recollection of it. The void and the smoke disappear, but the agency starts noticing strange occurrences above the Earth's atmosphere. Remnants of the void form a swirling cloud of gas and dust that flourishes into a planet. This new planet renders the laws of physics and science obsolete as this was thought to be impossible. The planet is deemed habitable. Not only that, Alex describes it as being custom-built for humans. They refer to the planet as Earth too. After Earth's struggle to develop a plan, they finally send numerous humanoids to colonize the new planet. The Void has given humanity a second chance in the form of a new planet. Everyone hopes that this can act as a lesson for humanity to do better and ultimately prove that their existence is worth saving. Twelve months after the Void's disappearance, Jillian narrates that she feels as if the Void hasn't left and that the aliens must still be observing them. Space Agency has sent out the first manned expedition to Earth 2, hoping that the first generation would help prepare the planet for the next generation of humans that would call Earth 2 their home. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.